Hi everyone, excuse the beard. It's locked down, I'm not shaving. <laughs> anyway, on the back of my battery install video, I had a lot of questions about my 12 volt electrics. So I thought I'd make a separate little video on my electrics. Um, now before I do, I have noticed in the analytics of YouTube that most of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So please, it would make a huge difference to me if you hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free, uh, but it would help me out a lot. I appreciate that. Okay, let's get into this video. <laughs> So the battery video went down quite well. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a card up top here. Uh, that was the video of me installing the new batteries. Um, so on the back of that video, I had a lot of questions about my uh, 12 volt electric. So I thought I'd make a separate video showing you my electrics and how I've set it up. And this is that's what this video is about, basically. I have to say that I am not a professional. I do not claim to be a professional. I'm not an expert. I, I know the basics with 12 volt electrics uh, and that's pre and that's basically what I've got here. It's a basic setup. There are far better things you can buy for your van if you have the money for it. But if you're on a budget like I am, then I've just done a simple setup. So in the comments, you, I'm all happy to get suggestions for upgrades and improvements. But what I don't want is people telling me, oh, you shouldn't have done it like this. You should have done it like that. I don't need that. I know there are better products and equipment you can buy, but I don't need that. But anything useful and suggest, you know, any useful suggestions, yeah, I'm all happy, I'm all ears for those kind of things. But this is just a basic 12 volt setup on a budget. So let's get into it. Okay, so to start with, uh, I built this van as a travel holiday weekend, get away anytime you want kind of van. I didn't build it to live in off grid. However, my circumstances have changed. Uh, my wife and I have decided to move into the van for a year to try and save some money so we can get a mortgage. Uh, so we are going to be going full time off grid in this van. So things have changed in the last few couple of months that, you know, that are going to be the result of some upgrades, etc. So that's not going to happen until all this lockdown and Corona business is behind us. Um, it's just not not a good not a convenient time to be living in a van right now. It's quite tricky out there, so we're just gonna wait a couple of months in this in our flat until until then. So that is the reason why I don't have a lot of solar and shower toilet block and you know you know what I mean. Anyway, let's get into it. So at the moment, I've got 150 watts of solar on the roof, as you can see from these shots. It's a it's a smallish panel. It's like like this sort of size. Uh, so yeah, 150 watt. Um, however, that is going to be, uh, I'm going to get another one of those in a couple of months. Um, again, as soon as this uh, lockdown is over, I'm going to get another 150 watt solar panel, just identical to that one, stick it next to it on the roof, so I'll have 300 watts of solar. That should be sufficient for my needs, because I do a lot of driving in the van anyway, so I've got a battery to battery charger that's always keeping my batteries topped up by itself. But obviously when you live in the van, you're going to be using a lot of juice, charging laptops, and you're going to be working, oh, my wife works from home sometimes, so she'll be using the electrics, and I'll be charging cameras and everything. So uh, I'll have a TV and things. So yeah, I'm going to need to have more solar. So yeah, so it's going to be 300 watts of solar, only 150 at the moment. So that leads me on to my solar charge controller, which you can probably see just here. I have got the MT50 display which is there it's next to my heater my chinese heater display that's there so the solar panel cables come into this cupboard which as you can see haven't been tidied up yet come into this cupboard and the solar charge controller box is there and if you want to know which one it is that i've got you can probably pause the screen and probably get a reader on that not sure if it's going to focus. So the cables from the solar panel come into this cupboard, into that, which is connected to the MT50 display. So my electrics for that go into this cupboard and then they go down the pillar here, the door pillar, underneath to underneath my sofa where the electrics is under here. I'll, now I'll show you my electric cupboard.
Now, this is my electrics cupboard. It is right next to the toilet. Ignore that. Now my batteries were further back. They were in the in the underneath the wardrobe. Um, but I wanted to, firstly, I wanted to create a, a cupboard where I can have some neat cable management going on and just start afresh with the electrics cupboard. And secondly, for better weight distribution in the van, I have a, quite a bit of weight in that far corner over that side, right at the back of the van. So I wanted to try and even the weight distribution out a bit. So having the heavy batteries, and they are heavy batteries, having the heavy batteries further forward in over this side of the van helps out a bit with that. So that's why the batteries are here. Let me bring you closer. Still not, still not finished yet, this electric cupboard, but it's getting there. It's getting there. I've got a few more electrical, loads more electrical bits to go on here. But let me show you what I've got. For those that have seen my Ledger battery install, these are my superior lead carbon AGM batteries. They are amazing. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave the, the card up top here. You can click on that and watch the install. So they are my new batteries and I love these batteries. This is my new Sterling battery to battery charger very clever bit of kit it regulates the <clears throat> it regulates the charge so you've got a bulk boost let me bring you in closer you'll have four lights here you've got an indication for when it's on bulk boost then absorption mode and conditioning and then float so when your batteries are, on, are fully charged they should just be just just ticking away keeping them nice so yeah you've got loads of settings for different types of batteries on these far kinder to your batteries than just having a split charge relay because that just literally just chucks 14 volts into your batteries um no matter the state of your batteries so if your batteries are completely full and you're constantly chucking 14 volts into them not quite as kind as getting a proper battery to battery charger so that charges while i'm driving the solar solar panel solar charge controller that also comes down to the battery um that also comes down to the battery and charges so yeah between the solar panel and this these batteries are constantly fully charged. Can I get, let me try and show you this. Uh, I hope you can see that. Smiley face, full battery, 0 0.6 amps. No solar coming in right now because the batteries are full. If those batteries dropped, then the solar charge controller will allow more power to go through to the batteries. But yeah, as you can see, fully charged, happy face. So I wanted to have some good cable management here. So I've got, you have to ignore this wire here. I haven't finished installing something yet. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but that's, ignore that loose one. But that will simply just bolt on to, clip onto there. So let me try and explain what's going on here. So I have wired my batteries together in parallel. So that means you wire the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. You have all the positives coming off of the positive terminal on one battery and all the earths and coming off of the negative on the other battery. So they are in parallel. So they are in parallel, which means they are 12 volts. You can do 24 volts, but I'm not interested in that. I want to do everything off of 12 volts. So I wanted good cable management here. So I, I wanted to, all the cables to come through the, this wall. All clip on to these things, look nice and neat. So the positive, the very fir first place that that goes to, it actually goes through that wall and comes out this wall and connects onto this. This is a 200 amp fuse. So before the battery, before the power goes anywhere, it goes straight to a fuse. It then goes from that fuse back through the wall and comes out here to my fuse box. So then, then all these terminals on this fuse box become live as long as you've got a fuse in them. So then these are all things like lights and my heater control. Where else have I got? My fridge, I think that's the fridge. I haven't labelled them up yet, but I, I, I intend to. One of these is my solar panel, one of these is my heater. These are lights and light bars on the front of the van. They are USB chargers around the van. Basically anything in, in your van that wants to run off those batteries come off of that fuse box. Once that's plugged on, I only have one terminal left on that, so I probably wouldn't get a second one of these and put it here. I'll just connect a positive from here to here probably. Let me know if that's the wrong way to do it, but if I connected another a positive from here to another fuse box here, then I'll have all these extra blades. So I'm gonna get another one of them soon. This is my bus bar where all the negatives go to. So this is obviously connected to the leisure battery here on this terminal. So yeah, then all the negatives, all the earths can go onto that. 
and that's safe. This is also earthed to the chassis of the van. Uh, right or wrong, my earthing point, I've earthed to the chassis of the van, but I've done that by taking out one of the bolts for the seat, uh, put a big chunky ring connector onto a big chunky earth cable and put it put that onto the one of the bolts from the driver's seat. So that is earthed to the chassis. It's been a fantastic earth. It's worked ever since I've started building this van. So that's my earthing point. Now I know you can earth things like all your lights and things. I know you can earth individual thing to the chassis of the van now, but I don't do any of that. I use twin core wire so that I bring all the earths down to my bus bar. I think I'd rather do that than have to just keep having lots of different independent ground points, do you know? This is my cheap inverter. It was given to me. Uh, the inverter just needs a positive and a negative, and I believe this, yep, yeah, this is the negative. This is the negative. So the leisure battery comes through the hole and to the top of the fuse, and the other two wires are one for the inverter and one for the fuse box. So I'm happy to use it for now. I only ever use it whilst I'm driving and the batteries are on charge. And I use it for things like laptops charging and drone charging just at the moment until I've got a decent 12 volt laptop charger and a decent 12 volt charger for my drone. But I rarely use it. While the wife and I was in Wales, we did use it while driving to charge the laptop so we could watch films at night and stuff. But like I say, as soon as I get a laptop charger, 12 volt laptop charger, I won't even use that, I don't think. But I've got it because I was given it. There's only one thing I can think of that I would use mains. And my wife's recently, in the last sort of year, got into crafty bits and, and sewing and quilting and, and all that kind of thing. I've just, you know, she made the bunting for me. Luke's Van Life bunting, which is really cool. And she's going to do a load of other little bits and pieces in here for me. But anyway, she wants to power a tiny little sewing machine. Speaking of my wife, here she comes now. Just talking about you. What are you doing? Wish me luck. We're on lockdown, where are you going? I'm going to Sainsbury's. Back in a minute. Now somebody mentioned to me in the comments on my battery install video that I should get a temperature sensor between the two batteries. Now I don't know what, like I say, I'm not an expert, I don't know what that does, but I do have a temperature sensor which comes with the sterling, which is this thing here. So I believe that keeps an eye on the, so I believe that keeps an eye on the battery temperature and I guess shuts it off when, uh, when it gets too hot. That's my guessing. Tell me if I'm wrong or right, I don't mind. Happy to be wrong, because then you learn. Now what else can I tell you about my electrics? So I run a lot of wires down the pillar. Behind the driver's seat belt, there's a pillar. I run a lot of wires through there and into this cupboard. It controls my heater display. Now, everyone's got these Chinese diesel heaters, and yes, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of them, so I won't talk about them for long, because I bore everybody talking about my heater. But I have run a separate switch here, this switch here powers the display for my heater. I haven't drilled a hole so that switch doesn't sit flush yet. But it's important to know that I put that switch on the main power cable from for the heater, not just the display. So the whole system, the whole heater system switches off from that switch. And I wanted that because I don't need that display on all the time. And now it's getting warm, I'm not going to need it on for probably months. So, so that's how I wired up the heater. What else is in here? There isn't that much electrics really. Lights, I've got under cupboard lights, I've got lights on the ceiling. This isn't finished either. I need to get a decent switch panel for here, but I have three of these little switches which panel ind independent sort of lights. So the left one powers the main lights. The right uh, middle one powers those lights under there. And the right one powers the kitchen lights. So yeah, I need to get a decent suck, uh, light switch there with three switches on. I, I don't, I'm happy to admit that I found that quite tr tricky to get my head round. Because you obviously want to put the... I put the switch on the positive line. So even talking about it now, I can't explain it properly, but you've got to run the, po the positive all the way to the switch and then onto the light. But then the earth needs to come from the light to the battery. Right or wrong, that's how I've done it. I think that's okay, but yeah, it just takes a, it. It confuses the out of me sometimes. What else can I tell you about the electrics? So right in that corner by the bed, there's USB switches. So again, that all goes through my bus bar, my fuse box, finds its way back there. I've got a water pump right in the back of the garage, which powers this tap here. Now for the fridge, I've got a Dometic CRX50, and it comes with really thin wires, like two. 
well it's not really thin it's like two mil wires i think which is like up to 25 amps but everybody recommended online that you change the upgrade the wires to make get chunky wires for the fridge especially if you've got a bit of travel between the power and the fridge so i used solar panel cable which was which, well it's four mil so it was double what came with the thing and that's worked fine i think that is i think that's that one there can't even remember what fuses for what right now but yes once uh once my electrics are finished i will label them all up it'll be pretty obvious though when something's not working that lights up tells me what fuse is going so yeah i don't need to know good to have a chart so you know what fuse is for what so before i had this setup and this battery to battery charger i did have a Durite vsr split charge relay voltage sensitive relay uh, which worked fantastic for my standard lead acid battery i used to have um, but like i say that just chucks 14 volts all day long when the engine's on into your batteries and doesn't regulate it doesn't regulate the charge so even if your battery's charged up it just keeps chucking as much charge into your batteries as possible so so for these superior lead carbon adm batteries i wanted to make sure that they last for as long as possible so because i had that split charge the cable was already there so that cable literally goes connects to the the batteries which is at this the passenger side in the bonnet um how did i get it through oh yeah i think the, the cable you just find a way for the cable to come through my cable just comes to this side of the bonnet and then it comes through the dashboard and then through the uh through all the pillars, I think, through the columns and then down this pillar. I think that's where that's how I got the power in here. Fiddly job getting cables through to a van, but needs to be done. That's how my battery to battery charger gets its power from the battery. And there is a couple of 50 amp fuses along that wire as well. And for those that don't know, my heater is down there. Comes out of a vent down there. And still got some wiring to neaten up in there. But yeah, all these cables go through this board. Behind that board, they are all sandwiched between this sheet of MDF and another sheet of MDF. Not only are they sandwiched to sort of in between those pieces of wood, they are all zip tied together. Nice and neat. I'm so happy with this setup. It's the neatest job I've ever done so far on van electrics i did have phil's guidance while i was fitting all this stuff so thank you geeky phil check out his youtube channel let me tidy up and tidy so it's gonna be probably pretty much entirely off-grid living this van but i do have an external mains plug-in point that is on the outside of my van on the driver's side i bought i bought a whole mains hookup point for my first conversion, which was in 2017. So I've got the plug-in. So I've got the plug-in port, which is on the driver's side, outside of the van. I've got the consumer unit. And there was something else I've got with it anyway. But anyway, that's it's not wired in yet. I think I'm gonna be off-grid, purely off-grid in this van. I can't see myself wanting to plug in, but I'm gonna fit it anyway. I've got it, might as well fit it all. So that's the only thing I haven't wired in yet. So I'm not sure when this video is gonna be released, but I do have some other electrical things that I haven't wired in yet. But they may be, those videos may not be out yet. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it, I think. So that's my electrics. I'm very proud of the job that I did on that. Uh, I think it's quite good cable management. It's quite nice and neat. Um, I think I need to label up the fuse box and it'll be quite easy to understand and remember. Because, you know, it could be years before, you, it could be months and years before you check your battery. So if, if I've got a little, if I maybe draw a diagram for myself so I know how to wire it up then I'll have that for reference in the future. But I think it's quite neat, right? I'm happy to have useful suggestions and tips in the comments, but keep your mean comments to yourself if you have any. I just want constructive and useful comments, <laughs> please. So if you got anything out of that video and you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps us out. It tells YouTube which videos to promote and it just, it just honestly, it helps us out so much. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.